So how well does a Mr. Cool universal heat pump really work in the winter, especially in the really cold temperatures? It's been three winters now since we first installed our Mr. Cool, and thus far the coldest it had been prior to this past week was minus nine. Uh, but this past week it went down to minus 10, and some different things happened with our Mr. Cool that I wanna share with you. We regularly get questions, since it's a heat pump, how well does the Mr. Cool heat in the winter? Uh, up to now, it's been absolutely phenomenal. We have, we've had no issues. But if you're in the US, uh, this past Christmas week, we had some seriously cold weather. And this cold weather really put our heat pump to the test. This Christmas week, not only did the temperature go down to minus 10 below Fahrenheit, but we also had constant, throughout the day, 25 and 30 mile per hour winds, nonstop. When I opened the, the curtain to our, our back door, I guess it was leaking just a little bit more than I had thought. Uh, the 30 mile an hour winds found bunches of leaks in our house, which really put the heat pump to the test. I saw the thermostat saying minus 10 degrees, and you can see right there the thermostat, the actual temperature in the house was, was 65, even though it was set at 70 and 71. And you can see also there's the call for the thermostat to heat the auxiliary heat or the heat strip but we don't have one and we've never needed one and those things are a huge energy suck anyway. So the temperature is still at 65 and it was a little chilly in the morning. Not only was the blowing wind finding all kinds of uh, air gaps within our house, but I looked up on the upper wall of our living room and I saw this weird like mark. And so I went and looked at it a little more closely, got up on the ladder and literally the wall was wet. And I'm surmising that from the outside, the direction of the way the wind was blowing, it was getting through and literally the snow was getting through some kind of void area and condensating on the wall on the inside. And so that's another issue that I didn't even know I had till we had these crazy winds. It's never been like this for 20 years, this blowing blizzard kind of a, a winter wind pointing out all kinds of issues that, that we have with our house, apparently. One more issue that we found out with the heat pump, and that is on these really super cold days, the normal process of a heat pump is for it to go into defrost mode every you know, six or 12 hours, whenever it feels like it needs it. But when it happens, uh, the heat pump runs in reverse. So normally it takes heat from outside, even at 10 below zero, it still can find heat from the outside and bring it to the inside and exchange cold air to the outside in that process. Well, when it goes to defrost, the heat pump runs in reverse. So it takes heat from the inside to thaw the, coil conden the coils on the condenser outside and brings cold air inside. And that didn't help anything as we we're trying to stay warm and it's bringing cold air in. So I started measuring the temperatures you know, during the day to see what kind of temperature I was getting at the register. And even though it was below zero for most of the day, slowly the register temperature started to climb. And yet the temperature still struggled to, to, to get back to our normal setting of 70 degrees. So we found out the limits to our heat pump. Uh, minus nine last year was no issue. It never, it never even, we never even knew it was that cold outside from the inside temperature. We never had any issue. But minus 10, plus 30 mile an hour winds, and what appears to be we have a few drafty spots in our house, that's the limit for us. That was the limit for the, the heat pump, being able to keep up with that. So I have a few projects laid out for myself for the springtime to try to address where these leaks are and, and try to button things up a little bit better. Uh, but I just thought I would re relay this because we've had so many questions about how does the heat pump actually perform and I wanted to let you know in this case it struggled to keep up. It was 60, the lowest it got was 65 and climbed throughout the day up to about 68. What can you expect if you were to install a Mr. Cool uh, universal heat pump? Well, there's so many variables, you know, what happens here at my house might be completely different from what happens at yours. But some things you want to consider are how insulated is your house and are there any surprising voids that you don't know about like what we just discovered here after living in this house for over 20 years how much roof insulation do you have we've got a lot uh, that's a big factor when you consider how much heat your house can lose how leaky is your house you know we found that around outlets uh, we could feel air 
uh, coming through some of the outlets. So we know that there's air gaps around those. Our windows are still pretty good, but you can feel around a couple of them where right by the molding, if the, the molding is not exactly touching the drywall, it's not sealed or caulked, we could feel some air around those, especially with these 30 mile an hour winds. So there's so many variables in so many different situations. I just thought I'd give you an anecdotal example of how it did in our house. I've seen videos where the Mr. Cool goes to minus 25 and can heat a, heat a medium sized house. Maybe the house is better insulated than ours and maybe there's fewer leaks than ours. That all that being said, we still love Mr. Cool. It's worked out great for us. This is the only day in the past three winters where we've really had any kind of uh, whoopsie, it's not really keeping up. Uh, but it only lasted for a little bit of time and you know after the wind subsided the, the heat pump was more than able to handle the temperature difference so i hope this video helps if you are looking for more information there'll be a link in the description below the video for a, a playlist of all our mr cool videos you can check those out uh, there's a lot of information there and hopefully if you're thinking about this you have enough information to make a good decision thanks a lot for watching so if you guys think you have to give us a thumbs up we appreciate it don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video